Witch County Spellcasters, right? Uh -huh. Give me the lore on the name. Yeah, so I'm really big on sandwiches. Big Spin Podcast. I am your host, FB.Christopher. And unless you're totally new to the channel, you know that on this podcast, we talk about all things fingerboarding. Um, we talk to the best and brightest in fingerboarding about their legendary fingerboard companies. And so today I have the homie, Eric. How's it so, going, Eric? Eric is actually in a unique spot in his fingerboard or brand owner journey because you're only six months in? Yeah, like six, seven months. Dude. Like seven. I feel yeah. like that's going to resonate with a lot of people checking out the podcast because so many of us are like early in to like starting companies and stuff. Yeah. So, dude, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for being here in my garage. <laughs> thank you. And this is the first episode in my garage. Dude, so it's, it's an honor, honestly. Dude, so I'm sick. stoked. I'm stoked. Well, obviously, I want to talk about everything that, you know, you have going on with Witch, everything you have planned for the new year. But first, to give everyone like a full view of the dude behind the brand, I wanted to talk to you about your early days. Is that cool? Yeah. All right. Let's, Let's dig in. Mr. Eric, where are you from? Where are you born and raised? So I was born in Northridge, California, okay. and I grew up in Pacoima. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm familiar. Played but, a couple of shows out there. Yeah. It's out in the San Fernando Valley and lived there like pretty much my whole life. I love that. Yeah. Valley kid. Valley boys. There you go. All right. And then um, as far as for um, living out there, were you living with family or do you have any siblings or anything like that? Or Yeah. So I was living out there with my family. Um, it was just me, my brother, my stepdad and my stepsister mm -hmm. and my mom. And um, yeah, like it was wasn't the cr greatest life because, you know, okay. Pacoima was like pretty, pretty hood. <laughs> OK, shout <laughs> out Pacoima. Yeah, it was it was sick overall. I had a pretty cool childhood out there. Okay, and I assume you went to school and stuff out there. Yeah, I did. What was uh, what was school like for you? I feel like you can tell a lot about someone in their adult life based on like what kind of kid they were in school. Um, were you, were you a popular kid in school? No, I was not. No, <laughs> is so like in middle school. That's when we first moved to Pacoima. Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, I think I was like nine years old at the time. And a lot of kids used to like bully me and a lot of really? my friends because we were just like the rockers, you know? Yeah. They're like, oh, so fool, you're a rocker, like, you know? Dude. Stuff like that. So, yeah, like I would just get bullied all the time or how to stand up for people all the time, you know? Heck yeah. And yeah, we're kind of like, it's kind of like a loner for the most part. Like the cool kid <laughs> of the loners? Yeah, I think so. I like that. I sometimes describe myself like that. Like I was like the most popular kid of the unpopular kids if that makes sense yeah you know what i mean and when you mentioned the whole like rocker thing have you ever off topic have you ever seen the movie what's up rockers oh yeah Dude. larry clark it's a hood classic Ooh. certified hood classic oh, yeah i love that um what were your hobbies like because i'd imagine so i know i know you're you come from a huge skate background mm -hmm. when did when did that kind of start like was it in elementary school or what was that like that transition of like being a little kid with just kind of running around till now you're kind of like picking up hobbies and stuff like that. Yeah. So my, ho like I would hang out with my brother a lot, at least when he would let me, cause he's eight, nine years older than me. Okay. So okay. when I was like seven, you know, he was like 15, 16. Yeah. And, um, he, he would go skate a lot and I would try to tag along with him and he would, he, I remember he bought me like a city stars board back in the day. Dude, shout out city stars. And I was like, dude, this is so cool. And then, I don't know what happened to it, yeah. but I was trying to learn how to skate. And it wasn't until like, I think like eighth grade when I finally, my mom, like, she was like, Hey, you know, you want a skateboard? Let's go get you one. And then we walked on over to like big five and she got yeah. me like one of the world industries completes yeah. with like the super bad grip tape that would just rub off. Yeah. yeah. So I learned how to heel flip on that thing. And I remember a lot of people like at school used to make fun of me because they're just like, dude, what is this? Yeah. With the plastic like, trucks. Yeah. Oh, dude, man. Shout out the big five, though. The big five boards. Oh, dude. Love big five. That's super sick. So I, based on what you said, I assume that your parents have always been super supportive of, I mean, aside from you, like not being like the popular kid, but it sounds like you're, even though, you know, 
you didn't have the most popular hobbies. It sounded like your parents were always super supportive. Yeah, my mom has always been very supportive of like anything I had to yeah. like any idea I had, anything I wanted to try. She was always like right behind me. You know, she never questioned anything. If I told her like, "Hey, mom, you know, I want to go skate or I want to be a pro skater," like that obviously didn't happen. Yeah, <laughs> I wasn't good enough. You know, but it, you know, if if I wanted to like stream or make music, whatever it may be, yeah. she was always behind it. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Um, have you did it as far as like wanting to do, I mean, I don't want to jump too far ahead, but as far as like wanting to have your own business, like, yeah, I know that you did like some clothing stuff and uh, you do your deck company obviously now, but was that always a big thing with you when you were younger? Like, did you know you wanted to do your own thing as far as like have something of your own? Yeah. I mean, I grew up a lot um, helping people build their own their own projects or their own sort of companies, you know? Yeah. And I've always wanted something for myself. So I always tried a bunch of like different things, like whether it was making clothing or, you know, streaming to like end up having my own merch and like trying to go hard on Twitch and things like that. Like I always like tried different avenues. Yeah. And I think like as a kid, you start to think like, I want a skateboard company. You know, oh, like for when, sure. you're, when you're young and you're super into skateboarding and you're like, I want my own skateboard company one day. And it, I feel like it only made sense for me to pick up fingerboarding and yeah. start making fingerboards because to me, that's like, that's a skateboard company to me. And yeah. It's something that I could be like super proud of, you know? Absolutely. Well, let's talk about a, a little bit more of like your skateboard background, right? Because um, I think that that plays heavily into obviously the love for fingerboarding. Um, talk to me about your first real experience with skateboarding. So I, I know you talked about your mom taking you to, or your brother getting you the board and then your mom taking you and getting that, you know, um, board from big lots. But what was that moment where maybe you saw skateboarding or, or was it your brother? Or how did it kind of just come into like, how did it come into frame? Yeah. So my brother, like way back in the day, he was like, he was sponsored by like blind. I believe it was like DVS that's sick. Um, there was there used to be an old wax company I think called like Trick Slide. Okay. And then okay. he was like sponsored by like different like local shops. Like one was like 118 or like White Sands or something like that. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the names, but yeah, he he used to go out and film a lot with his friends. Like they took it very seriously, and I always thought that was like super cool. Hell yeah! Like that was like one of the coolest things to me. And I was like, you know, as a little brother you always look up to your older brother and you're just like, Oh, I wanna, for sure. I want to be like that. You know? Yeah. Wanna, like he motivates me. He inspires me to like become that, you know? Hell yeah. That's sick. How, so when you, when your brother, so now that your brother, cause you said he's eight years older than you. Yeah. So he's skating, you start picking up on skating. Um, I know you, you mentioned that you weren't that good, but I mean, when you start skating, you know, aside from like maybe thinking you want your own brand and stuff like that, I feel like everyone kind of at least has a little bit of the mindset of like, I want to be a pro skater. Yeah. You know, was it ever like that for you? Like it, throughout your whole journey, was it ever like skating to become pro from a part, jump on a team, or was it always just kind of just hanging out with friends and session? Yeah. So we would just hang out a lot and we'll just go skate a lot. And I was the one that always had a camera. So okay. I always had like this little, you know, mini DV camcorder with like, like a, it was like a fisheye lens that wouldn't actually like screw in. So I, we used yeah. to hog glue it. And every time we'll fall off, we'll just hog glue it again. That's sick. So we would just go out and film and everything. And um, <laughs> I used to have like, like I used to like tell people like, yeah, man, I'm going to be a pro, you know? But yeah. then I started realizing that I like to hold, the, like I like holding the camera. I like filming more. Okay. So I started just filming all my friends and like, trying to like push their stuff out there make like montages and edits and stuff like that right and um so you i mean it's safe to say you felt more comfortable behind the camera than in front of the camera yeah okay and then not to segue too far out of skateboarding but that also plays a role in like your day-to-day -day life now as far as like what you do outside of fingerboarding is that right yeah are you able to give us a brief overview of what you kind of do when you're not crafting incredible little fingerboards yeah so my my nine to five is pretty boring, <laughs> okay. but it's it's also super chill. Like, I love that place, and we basically just like I help 
manage, like, make sure all orders get out. It's like a fulfillment center and stuff. Okay. So that's actually where I do my work out of. Mm-hmm. So my boss, man, he was actually, he blessed me and he was like, yeah, you can have like a space where you can have your router table and really your, your press and like all that that's stuff. That's huge. So that's, that's where I work out of. So I'm super grateful for that. Um, but aside from that, I've been doing like photography and film or film work, like freelancing for like 10 years. 10, maybe 11 years, because I started, I picked up a camera in 2013. And, uh, yeah, I started doing, like, I kind of got thrown into the fire yeah. when that happened, because yeah. I don't know what it was, but as soon as I started taking pictures or making little, like, skateboard edits of all my friends, like, people started kind of, like, hitting me up, and they're like, hey, can you take pictures of my brand? And I was like, "Really? okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So, started doing that, and, um... So that's, that's like on the side that I do that. And then mm-hmm. I also do, uh, I film food reviews for a buddy of mine and he's super cool. Is it, super his name, guy. is his name grubbing with Greg by chance? <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a crazy parallel between you and Jake. Shout yeah. Out Jake, shout out Greg. That's sick. <laughs> okay. So you film with your buddy food reviews. Yeah. Yeah. We travel around like around the around the the country um he wants to take me overseas like internationally and stuff when he gets oh so like, wait so this is like this is like a big operation yeah this is not just like you and your buddy filming fucking at in and out yeah he's, he's he's doing his thing and i'm like super proud of him so i help him out a lot whenever i get the chance to like yeah shout yeah. out that dude yeah do you, wait, do, you, do you get to do you get to try the food with him oh yeah well like well basically he'll ask me whatever i want like, like, oh, do you want this? I'm like, yeah, sure. Just because most of these places, I don't know what to get because I've never been there. Yeah. So he'd be like, oh, I got you. I heard this is good. So he'll like give me like, he'll he'll pretty much order my food for me. Yeah. And then I'll film, I'll like film him, try the food. Yeah. And then we start eating. Dude, that's love. Letting your homie get greens on your plate. Oh, yeah. I like that. All right. Segway back into, <clears throat> segueing back into your, uh, your skateboarding. Mm-hmm. Um, t- talk to me about your favorite skateboard company growing up, man. It was anything like Crail Tap, like okay. Girl Chocolate, you know, those, mm-hmm. those were the boards I really, really liked growing up as a kid. And then, um, I got into, to Baker after oh, dude. Baker three dropped. Oh, dude. Baker three was life changing. Dude. So good. That was like, that was like one of my favorites, but it's, it's always been like anything Crail Tap, like yeah, pretty sweet is one of my favorite videos like of all time. Really? Are you talking like all all in all favorite video? Or are you talking from a filmish perspective or skateboarding perspective or skateboarding? And then from, I would say if, if I had to choose something from a filmer's perspective, it'd be the cinematographer project. Okay. That's when like a bunch of, it's just a whole, all the heavy hitters oh, and yeah. like Hell skateboard yeah. filming just come together and make doing their crazy, thing. Crazy. Like it's crazy video. I love that. That's super sick. Um, what is, um, talk to me about your favorite pro skater growing up. Sean Malto. Sean Malto. Yeah. Dude, that's, you know what? I don't think I've heard anyone say Sean Malto before. Sean Malto. He's, he's the GOAT. I Love like him. that. That's, okay, so now I'm curious. Who was your go-to uh, player in Tony Hawk? Uh, I think it was because of the, the, the red cap, but it was Bucky Lasik or Lasik. Yeah? Yeah. Dude, okay, a little vert <laughs> action going on. Yeah, I, I didn't know I that, like though. That. I was a little kid, and I was just like, oh, I like his hat. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, I would always choose him. I like that. You know what? For me, it's funny you say that, because when I first started playing, didn't really know the characters and know the skaters and stuff like yeah. that. Um, I was big on um, Room Glyphberg, um, just because of the blue jersey. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, you know? And then, you know, once you kind of, like, get more into it, you're like, okay, Jamie Thomas and Andrew Reynolds, and you know? But, yeah, yeah for me, it was it was the blue jersey with Room Glyphberg. Shout yeah. out Room. I like that. Uh, describe your, um, well, I know you kind of described your, your big five skateboard, but talk to me about your first real like professional skateboard. Do you remember what it was? What brand? What graphic? Yeah. So it was a, a girl skateboards. I forgot what anniversary it was at the time, but it was a, a Rick Howard board. Okay. And uh, we picked that up. My mom picked that up for me for my birthday at Val Surf and it had Grand King trucks. It was like, Dark gray hangers, black base plate, Grand yeah. Kings with like black girl wheels yeah. on it. And that was like, that was my thing. 
Like yeah. I was so hyped on that thing, but I had it for like a week and then it got stolen from me. <laughs> Damn, dude. It was, like, it was like a whole thing. Like it was, it was pretty crazy that That's entire situation. <laughs> so now it was back to the world industries. <laughs> no, I just, I didn't have a board at all for like, dude, that's the worst. Yeah. The, the way, the way I got that board back was kind of crazy because essentially what happened was like, it got stolen from me in a crowd of, of people by like just a bunch of dudes that did not like me. Like in yeah. high school, I was like five, two in like ninth grade. Really? So I was tiny. Couldn't tell now. Dude. <laughs> now, you're just, now you're just towering over me. Dude. I didn't, honestly, nobody thought I was going to like actually get tall. Yeah, and I was like, this is crazy. But yeah. I was so tiny in like ninth grade that people used to like just like mess with me a lot. Yeah. And they ended up stealing my board from me. And I remember going home and telling my brother and I was like, hey, these guys took my board. They live over here. And I remember he went with his friends and then they ended up getting it back for me. Damn. That's crazy. I'm still yeah. waiting for my get tall moment. It's yeah. going to happen. It, it might happen. I'm still waiting for it. I just it's, it's going to come. Yeah, I believe in myself. It's on it's on its way. Um, as far as your, uh, just to kind of wrap up your, your skate history here, yeah. um, were you regular or goofy? Regular. Regular. Yeah. I like that. Give us an idea of where you were when you, and not so much stopped, cause I'd imagine everyone still pushes around now, yeah. but at your, at your peak skateboarding, give me, give me an idea of where you were. Were we flipping downstairs? Um, I was never huge on kind of doing, like, I didn't like doing rails or anything like that. I've actually never done a handrail, but I was really into doing like gaps yeah. or I would do stairs or ledge tricks. Oh, yeah. So I think like my peak when I stopped or like kind of slowed down on skateboarding was when I got injured. Ooh. And um, I think I was trying no comply over like a lunch table mm. and I almost got it. <laughs> and that was like as probably as good as I got. And um, I think my favorite clip that I've ever gotten was there's like this, I think it's an echo park. But it's like a pretty famous like bump over sidewalk and it's pretty big. And I like no complied over that. Damn. Yeah. I have okay. the foot I have the footy I'll show you later. We gotta roll the footy. Yeah. Gotcha. I like that. I like that. Uh talk to me about your worst slam. Dude, my worst slam. It's not even like from trying any tricks. Uh I was like hill bombing, like this like that already sounds fucked. Yeah. <laughs> and uh we're, we're, it was like me and a couple of friends. This was like a very long time ago. Yeah. And we're just going down this hill. And I don't know why a buddy of mine, he's, we're not friends anymore since this, since this day. I was about to say, yeah, it sounds like the friendship's about to end. But it was Life. one of those things where he was trying to like, I guess, beat me to the bottom. Oh, and he dude. like grabbed me and like pushed himself forward. And I got speed wobble and I slammed on my head. There's no... In skateboarding, if you know, you know, there's no worse feeling than when you start speed wobbling because, you know, it never ends well. Oh, man. It was so it was so crazy. Like, I felt the wobble. And next thing you know, I'm already on the ground. <laughs> Dude, shout out to speed. No, never mind. No shout out for speed wobbles. <laughs> speed wobbles suck. That's crazy. And so just to kind of wrap up the skateboarding stuff, mm -hmm. does skateboarding play a big role in your life now as far as like, are you still because from what I understand, you were still pretty much like part of the industry and stuff like that as far as like more on the retail side? Yeah, so I'm always going to love skateboarding. Like, I don't do tricks as often anymore. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll do the same bag of tricks that I've done for years. Yeah. Just because, like, I, I had a pretty bad, like, foot injury. Like, I tore my Achilles tendon. Really? Doing a varial flip. Oh, And dude. I landed primo. But, like, when I landed, my left foot pointed straight down to the floor and all my weight just twisted it this way. Yeah, that's and, that's going to do it. <laughs> you know, like, I feel like most people, like, you kind of yeah. just don't go to the doctor. So I never went to the doctor, and it still kind of hurts to this day. Damn, still clicks a little? Yeah. When you roll your foot? <laughs> yeah, it sucks. If I stand too long, like, I, I, can, I can tell when the weather's changing because I get a pain in my ankle. <laughs> like, Damn, dude. Basically, dude. I'm like, oh, it's a cold front coming, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I like that. Skateboarding is like always, it's gonna, always going to be a big part of my life, you know? I like that. Your ankle kind of reminds me of that girl from uh, Mean Girls, where she can tell the weather. Yeah. Well, like touching. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's exactly. All that. right. So uh, kind of bridging the gap between 
uh, skateboarding and fingerboarding now. A yeah. uh, question we like to ask here is, is it possible for someone to fully love and appreciate fingerboarding if skateboarding was never really something they were into? Obviously, this is just your opinion on that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, I, I feel like I see a lot of people every day that they don't necessarily know what certain tricks are. They're just kind of like flipping it around, but they're having fun. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day. So I wouldn't knock it. I'm not going to knock their hustle. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Okay. Uh, talk to me about your first experience with fingerboarding. Like, when did that kind of come into the picture for you? My brother brought home, I forgot what year, but dude, I was little, yeah. but he brought home a tech deck. Okay. And I, I must have been super young because I had just learned how to pronounce like the ch sound. Yeah. Like how to spell it out and stuff. So I was calling Learning it. phonics? Yeah, dude. Love that. Shout out phonics. <laughs> Shout out hooked on phonics. <laughs> um, <laughs> But basically, like, he would bring it, he brought it home, and I was like, oh, a Tetch deck. And he's like, it's not Tetch, it's Tech. And he was giving me attitude and stuff. Like, damn. Dumb little brother thing. Yeah, yeah. The older brother. <laughs> and yeah. um, I would play with it, like, a lot more than he did. And then, um, you know, I, I didn't really care for it too much because I was such a kid. So I was so little. So it wasn't until, like, high school where I started, like, actually picking up Tech decks and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'll just go to Target and kind of just take them. <laughs> oh, so you're the guy taking all the Danny Way tech decks Every from the one. from the half pipe. <laughs> Every I, you know, I, it's like I always tell my wife, I'm like, there's one thing you can count at Target. They're always out of stock on tech yeah. decks, and then the packs that come with ramps and tech decks, the tech yeah. decks are always gone. Dude, okay, yeah. shout shout out, shout out, thief Eric over here taking from Target. If you're watching this, this, would, is, this is just AI. He he didn't say that. I was just getting them taken away a lot. Yeah, in high school. So it's like I was like, dude, I don't have money. I don't have two bucks to spend every day. That's true. So I'll just go pick them up. Did it occur to you early on with tech decks that like you were supposed to do tricks on them? Or was yeah. it more like a, like a trading card? Like, like it was for me. No, I was, I was learning tricks. Damn. Yeah. I just might've been just me. I'm gonna stop telling people that story. Matter of fact, pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. As far as your, uh, your first tech deck, do you remember what it was? Oh man. I don't No. No, I don't. What's that one favorite tech deck? I know there has to be one from the past that you still reminisce about. There was there was a Jeff Grosso board that I had. That one was really cool. But okay, I've had I feel like I had so many, and yeah. they just all kind of came and went. Oh yeah, heck yeah! I've had a couple of those. Damn, a couple of those. The Jeff Raleigh setup. Remember the black one with like the skull. And his name was written in like oh, ransom, yeah. dude. That's a good one. That was my, that was my grail. Don't know what happened to it though. All right, tell me about your first pro fingerboard setup, because obviously there's a huge difference, right? When you go from learning tricks and session on a tech deck to doing like the pro stuff, right? Yeah. What was your first experience with pro fingerboarding in general? And tell me about your first pro setup. So, it, I feel like it was maybe four, like four years ago, like maybe late 2019, early 2020. Yeah. My, my buddy, Chris did a, he did a collaboration with variant and it was like a delish, uh, collaboration. And so he gave me one of those boards and I was like, this is so cool. Like, you know, I've never actually held a pro fingerboard before. Yeah. So he, he gave me one of those, he gave me a bunch of China trucks and was just like, yeah, set it up. And after I set it up, I started actually getting my tricks back. Cause I was like, dude, I remember I used to do this. I used to do this and this, yeah. and I didn't try to progress at all. It was just like mainly just whatever I remembered. I knew how to do, I would mm -hmm. just do it. And, um, I was just like, watch, like I, I started watching like professional fingerboard videos, like mm -hmm. more often, like I would either watch people setting them, setting them up or like ordering just a whole haul from like whatever brand they were ordering from or what store, you know? And I was yeah. like, this is really cool. Like, I didn't really realize just how big it was at the time, yeah. you know? And um, I didn't really know that many people that fingerboarded. Right. Except for, like, me and, like, two other people right. that were, like, in my immediate friend group. Yeah. So I didn't really look into it like that. I didn't know that there were events. I didn't know that people got together and actually did it. Right. And um, so after that, I kind of was just like, dude, I want to make some of these. <laughs> okay. 
at some so that, point. That's this the transition. Later, this was down the line. Though. Okay. Talk to me. So just for context, how old were you when you first discovered tech decks? Dude, I was probably maybe like six. Okay. Maybe six and or And for seven. context, how old were you when you got your first pro board, the, the variant deck your homie gave you? Just so we can kind of bridge the gap there as far as time-wise. So I was 28. Okay. Yeah. So how long would you say you've been fingerboarding on a on like professional setups? I think I think I started like actually trying like two years ago. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I like that. Okay. Now transitioning into which, because obviously that's why we're here. Which, by the way, what? So what's the official full name for the company? So you can say it however you want. Okay. <laughs> Is uh. It's, it's, you can say, you just call it which, which okay. county, which county spellcasters, however you want to say it. Um, what's the official name though? Which county spellcasters? <laughs> okay. So which it's, county it's spellcasters? Like a, it's like a pimp name slick back, you know? Okay. Might as well say the whole thing if you're going to start saying it. Is that the government name for the company? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. On the tax yeah. forms. I just did a, I got his birth certificate recently. I went to the DMV and I st- like just stood in line for like five hours. And I just get a social for your company. And I came back just holding it like this. <laughs> Little baby witch. Yeah. I like that. Shout out baby witch. Um, okay. So we talked about when you were younger, you kind of always had that um, that drive to kind of have your own thing, right? Yeah. So now, you know, you, you were introduced to Pro Fingerboards, uh, shout out Variant. And then, uh, so now you're kind of transitioning into like, okay, like I kind of want to do my own thing. Yeah. Um, talk to me about that moment though, because it... it there's a lot of things we come into contact with in life that you don't just decide you want to start making. Yeah. You know what I mean? So what was that? Like, what was your mindset? Was there something missing in fingerboarding that you thought maybe you can bring to the table or what, what was that mindset like? So it was, it was, I feel like it was pretty random to be honest. Cause I just, I, I've always had people around me that inspired me a lot and they always had their own thing, right? Like whether it was clothing or, you know, some sort of company. Right. Yeah. And it was just super cool to see my friends like thriving. And ever since I could remember, I've always wanted something for myself. Right. Mm -hmm. So I remember I was just kind of like doing kickflips and I was like, Hmm, I want to make boards. Like this would be kind of cool. You know, like just, it was just kind of out of fun. Like I wasn't really like planning on anything really. Right. Yeah. So what I started to do was I was buying like just like China boards from mm-hmm. like Alibaba. Okay. And I was just like, and I found like real, like a real wear graphic supplier <clears throat> and I just started printing them. Like I bought like a little roller and everything and I started printing them and I was just putting whatever random ideas I had yeah. onto boards. And then that kind of funded, I used that to like fund so I'm getting ahead of myself. So basically I would put these boards on Depop yeah. out of all places and sell them there. And people actually like, like them. So you're slanging boards on so Depop. I'm, yeah. I'm, I was slanging boards on Depop and I used all that cash to like invest into like a router table, a press and veneer. Was, was it already witch at this point or was it just no. kind of a random thing? So basically what happened was I started an account. And it was called, it was originally called witchblade.fb. Okay. And I don't know, I didn't know what I was going to do with that. Right. I was kind of posting, uh, I was either posting clips or I was posting review videos of like brands that like I liked or things that I bought, you know? Yeah. And I was just like making little edits and stuff. And it wasn't until my buddy Chris was kind of like, hey man, like you should just try it out. Like yeah. that'd be sick. That'd be super cool. You know? Yeah. So after I figured everything out, like I kind of just, I kind of just started like figuring out what kind of, like what, what route I wanted to take. Right. You know, because I don't want to go and play off of like Witchblade because one, that's a little peep song. Yeah. And two, it's like unoriginal. Shout out Peep. Shouts out Peep. He's one of my favorite artists, you know? Heck yeah. Um, But yeah, like I was struggling a lot. Yeah. trying to figure out everything that I needed to do, like everything I needed in terms of like equipment, how to actually shape the boards, what bits I needed, what kind of glue, okay. like just everything. Well, that kind of leads me into my next thing here. So 
And, and let me just say, when you talk about, you know, getting the China decks and stuff like that, or, or like the off-brand decks, and then figuring out real work, uh, real work graphics, that's a huge thing because a lot of people struggle with that the hardest. So the fact that you just kind of stumbled upon it and figured it out with the roller and stuff like that, with like the heat roller and stuff. Yeah. So I kind of knew where to get like real work graphics because early on when I was like, actually, this actually slipped my mind, but I used to work for a, a company called Unified. Okay. And I don't, I don't know if you ever heard of like sugar skateboards, but back in the day, this was like one of my first jobs mm -hmm. in like 2011, 2012. Yeah. Uh, we uh, like we would print skateboards. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're already familiar in that realm because a lot of people don't realize, but for the most part, real world, real world graphics on a fingerboard. Yeah. Same thing with skateboard. Yeah, exactly. Just on a smaller scale. Yeah. So I was like, I kind of already knew where to get those, and I had the experience of like printing like actual skateboards. Yeah. So kind of just like One hand. came natural to me. Yeah. yeah. That's sick. So what, so what kind of ties into what we're talking about here, it's when it comes to creating anything, there's obviously a learning process. Yeah. Um, would you say you were more guided by like tutorials and information found online about making fingerboards? Or would you say more of the knowledge kind of came from like, like a, essentially a trial and error? Or was it more from other deck makers and or like friends? Or where did the knowledge come from? Yeah. So when I was trying to figure everything out, um, I told my buddy Greg and I was like, Hey, like I'm printing on China boards, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. check this out. He's like, Oh, this is really sick. He's like, but you should make them yourself. And I was like, I don't know how to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know how to do that yet. You know? And I, I, I had reached out to people like, obviously when I had like 10 followers or something, nobody wanted to tell me anything. Right. You know? And like at, at where I'm at now, like even if I had like 50 followers at this point, I would still tell people whatever, whatever it was they needed. Right. So right. I never understood like people kind of gatekeeping things that yeah. you, you're eventually going to find out, yeah. you know? So I sat there and I remember I was like sitting, like I was sitting at my desk and I texted my friend Matt and I showed him a picture of like all the decks I printed. He's like, Hey, you should hit up my friend. And I was like, I was like, yo, okay. Like why? He's like, Oh, cause he makes boards. And I was like, okay. So I like sent it over. And um, I've never met this dude in my life. Yeah. He still, to this day, does not know who I am. Okay. And uh, so, essentially, I was texting uh, I was texting Chetty from Stacked. Shout out Chetty. So, shouts out Chetty. He, like, such he's a... He's like a wealth of knowledge. Dude, he's such a cool dude because, like, I kind of just asked him, and then he gave me, like, this entire, like, just novel of things that I needed. Dude, Chetty's, Chetty's the fucking man. And I was so stoked. I was like, dude, this is crazy. Like, thank you. You know? Yeah. I was like super grateful about it because like I was, I felt like I was stuck. Yeah. Like I was like, okay, like I know where to get graphics, but like, I don't know where to get templates or shapers or anything like that. And he kind of gave you the whole rundown. Gave me everything I needed to know. Dude. And because of him, like that's essentially why I started and how yeah. I like just got to it right away. I didn't even see that coming. That's dope. The tie-in with Chetty and Stacked. Yeah. That's I still sick. need to meet him. Like, Oh, dude, he's so great. <laughs> yeah, no, Chetty's great. We got to have him on the pod, actually. That'd be so sick. Dude, that'd be super fire. That's dope. I didn't see that coming. Dude, he's one of the craziest, like, deck makers, in my opinion. Oh, like, dude. His stuff is so good. Yeah, he I, he does, you know, he works with Dynamic and Joy Cole yeah. and Moods and all that. So, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, my, my next thing here, which you, you kind of segued into yourself, um, like, by yourself... But um, I, I, yeah, I was going to mention that when it comes to making fingerboard decks or wheels or obstacles or pretty much anything, there's this level of gatekeeping, which yeah, arguably is like, it, it's I kind of see the arguments why it would be somewhat important to gatekeep that information. I also see the benefits of not gatekeeping that information. Um, I, so I wanted to ask your opinion on it, but it sounds like you're pretty open to helping people out and, you know, <laughs> even just get started. Yeah. I mean... I've had people message me like <clears throat> it's not often, but they do. Yeah. And I think like a lot, a lot of people are kind of like deterred from like messaging board, like different board companies or like yeah. deck makers because like they already feel like oh, I'm, they're just going to ignore me anyway, you know? Yeah. But I've had people hit me up, whether it be TikTok or Instagram, whatever. They'll like message me like, hey, like 
how do I make boards? And I have this in, in my notes, I have this entire list of things that you can do yeah, in different ways that you can do it down to like how I dye my veneer and everything. Okay. And I just like send it to them. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Um, talk to me about the first official witch board that you made versus now. How much has that process, just like an overview, how much has that process changed? Um, you know, obviously quality wise and stuff like that. Oh, the quality's changed a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like when I first started, I was kind of like, I hit up random people and I was like, hey, do you want to test out a board? And they're like, sure. And I sent them a board and they're like, this is tight. Like this, this feels good, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of all I needed to hear to like be like, okay, I can invent, like advance into the next step. Yeah. Like I can start like, you know, starting taking product photos and like trying to put these out there. To yeah. like get them out to like more people, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And you're, I've, I've told you, I, I'm super picky on decks. Like that's kind of something that, you know, people closest to me, even Jake can tell you, I'm super like OCD about like deck shapes yeah. and, and stuff. And your low shape is great. Pause on your low shape is great, but it's really Thank good. You. Thank it's you. It's really, really good. Um, as far as for, um, as far as for, and this is backtracking a little bit, Yeah. but um, give us, an idea of like where the name, I'm so curious about this. Talk to us about the name a little bit more. Cause we said it's which County spellcasters, uh -huh. right? Give me the lore on the name. Yeah. So I'm really big on sandwiches and I spelled with, no, no it's, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, if you, if you tell people that it's Sando County it's actually and that it's just, which is spelled, which, but it's pronounced Sando, it'll work. Yeah, so Tyga took Rack City, so I couldn't take that. Okay. Um, but no, pretty much like what it was is after looking at my name when it was like Witchblade, I was like, I don't want FB in the name. I don't want Dex. I don't want Fingerboards. Yeah. I don't want any of that. Yeah. So I was like, and I, I've always liked how like words looked. Like whenever I'll, I'll see, you know, artists have songs and like, it's all one word, but it's a long sentence. Yeah. I always thought that was really cool. Yeah. Right. So it's going to sound super nerdy, but I was literally just sitting at home mm -hmm. playing RuneScape. <laughs> and I've, okay. been, I've been playing RuneScape since I, like 2007. Okay. And I was sitting there and I was working. I have like multiple accounts. Mm -hmm. So one of my accounts, I was like just sitting there like working on the, on my magic level <laughs> during like a double XP weekend. I, and I, I love like, that working on your magic level <laughs> and i was just like huh i l i love this game and i was like and it just kind of it randomly just popped in my head the full thing the or like just which county thing. like the the entire thing was just which county spellcasters i was like that sounds cool because like yeah i'm literally casting spells and i love this shit like like that i love it a lot okay. so i remember i remember texting uh jet jet lee like <clears throat> immediately like when that happened yeah. And I was just like, yo, I'm changing the name and it's going to be Witch County Spellcasters. And he's like, I love it. That's it. So, okay. So that brings me to my next question where I was going to ask like, where does the name come from and were there any other names like up for grabs? So was it originally Witchblade? Yeah. And then, okay. Okay. So yeah. Witchblade first. Yeah. And then, okay. And then, so when you originally launched back in March of this year, was it launched as Witch County or was it launched as... It was, it was launched at as a Witchblade. Witchblade, okay. Because yeah. uh, like that's kind of where the the logo comes from. Because it's it says witch and has a blade in the middle. I like that. Yeah, it's a knife. It's a, it's a knife. It's a knife I like that. <laughs> I like that. Um, talk to me about the 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 wording that's on the top of the boards. Oh, okay. So on the top of the boards, it says, "The sun will sleep. I'll close my eyes. Never again will I wake in fright." And it's this thing I like, it was like three in the morning and I used to like kind of deal with like insomnia a lot. Okay. So I would be up at like the wee hours of the night, just trying to figure out what to do with my life. I love that you said wee hours. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Okay. And uh, it was just one of those things like I used to have like really bad anxiety. Oh yeah. And it was hard for me to like do things or like put myself out there mm -hmm. like that. So it's kind of just my way of saying like, don't be afraid, you know, like don't be so scared. That, so that's original. So you wrote that. Yeah. Dude, that's tight. 
That's sick. That makes it even cooler. Because when I first read it, I was like, okay, probably like an ex excerpt from you know something. Yeah. But that's sick that you actually wrote that. Yeah, it's like kind of like a success is on the other side of fear. So it's like you just gotta just get up and go for it. Like don't be afraid to do things or get out of your comfort zone to like try things out, which is like what I'm doing right now. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. In a couple of weeks, we're going to be doing a deck maker pod, right? Where it's going to be Dylan from Awful, uh, Stefan from Devise, yourself. And I kind of like that. Like Stefan is, has been doing Devise for 15 years. Yeah. It could be give or take. Dylan's been doing Awful for like three or four years. You're kind of just in, in still within your first year of doing which. Um, so I, I kind of like the, the, that we're going to get that difference in like time frame. You know what I mean? But being that you're someone who is still really early on in, um, your deck making and like company owner era and stuff like that. Um, if someone was listening right now and they're thinking about starting their own deck company or they're currently starting their own deck company, what is a couple pieces of advice that you could give someone that you wish you knew day one that you know now nine months in? I would pretty much say like, just if, if you're looking, if you, if you're looking to try and just start, I would say just start. Just and don't be afraid to ask questions because you'll never know who's actually going to answer your questions. Um, believe in yourself. If you're, if you're going to do this to try to take it seriously, like one, believe in yourself Two, have fun and just overall, just, you, I feel like you got to be a little delusional too, to an extent be like, yeah, my stuff is going to be, it's going to be cool. Yeah. You know, because that's kind of how I like went into it. I was like, my stuff's going to be sick. Yeah. Even though I had my doubts mm -hmm. like along the way with like what, wh whether it was with this or with anything else, because I feel like as you know, we're, we're human. So we're our worst critics and we're always going to doubt ourselves a lot. Yeah. So I feel like as long as you believe in yourself and you tell yourself that like you're going to be doing cool shit. Yeah. Then. You're, you're, you're solid, but I don't, don't be afraid to ask questions yeah. ever. Heck yeah. That's dope. And especially you, you said you're willing to answer those questions. Yeah. Dude, your DMS are about to pop. I love that. I love that. I gotcha. <laughs> talk, talk to me about the, um, the aesthetic of, of which, right. And more so specifically, like, obviously when you have which County spellcasters, it gives that darker vibes. Um, some of your graphics lean more towards like, like darker vibes, like, to the point where even even like some awful graphics people have like like with the church and stuff like that like is that something you that you kind of lean into that intentionally or where does the where does the inspiration for your graphics come from i kind of just have like if i have an idea i'll just get to it like right away mm -hmm. usually and sometimes it just doesn't make sense until it does at least to me okay um i don't necessarily try to like have anything like super dark you know yeah um i think like i just feel like uh i don't want to box myself in too much either you know okay. because i have a lot of ideas for other things as well and i don't want people to think like oh this is just a very straight up only like a horror type of like company or yeah it has to do with magic or this this and that you know yeah so i'm still gonna continue branching out because i'm still like very new yeah and i don't have too much time on my hands to yeah. like continue pushing things out as much as i would like so there's not that many graphics that I actually released over the past like seven months yeah but i do have a lot of different things like in mind in terms of like graphics okay they're gonna come out very soon i like that are there any other notable fingerboard brands that you kind of look to for inspiration and not just maybe not just graphics but like overall direction you know planning events and stuff like that any notable names that that kind of come to mind you know i don't know if this is going to sound crazy but i do my best to just not look at what anyone else is doing ever i like that i can appreciate and that it's, and it's not like i'm not it's not to like hate or anything like that i just i don't I don't want to see what anyone else is doing because I try to like keep my create like my creative palette fresh. Yeah. And you know, sometimes I feel like, especially if you're new to something, if you like see something that you're like, damn man, that's cool. Like 
man, or I had that idea first. Like, I feel like people would kind of like tend to like think that way, you know? Yeah. And I feel like it's best, like if, if you're new or whatever, like it's best to kind of just stay off your phone mm-hmm. and, you know, obviously show love to the people you, you're, you, you're, are go- you're going to show love to yeah. and that people that you connect with and stuff like that. Cause I have, there's people that I follow that I've made a connection with already. And those are the people that I kind of keep up with, you know, and I'll see their stuff. I'm like, this is really sick. Yeah. Heck yeah. But I try to just kind of stay off of social media if I don't need to be, you know, so I don't, yeah, I don't really look at anything really. I like that. Okay. Um, as far as for kind of transitioning now into different aspects of the company, but in 2024, almost 2025, in your opinion, can brands, you know, older or newer brands, can they successfully grow, grow their platform without a presence on social media? No, there's no way. Social media is the way to go. You have to like, I know a lot of people don't want to make shorts or they don't want to like, they just might feel like it's too corny, you know, yeah. but even the smallest things can go a long way. Like I've seen people like post videos of them either routing or just pressing their boards and they go crazy. Yeah. And then they get a lot of traction. Some, some people will be like, they're not even into fingerboarding, but maybe they might be now just seeing you make one. They'll be like, oh, I, you know what? This I've always thought about these. These are cool. Maybe I'll get one. Yeah. You know? So I, I just think like you have to have a social media presence. I can appreciate that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, if someone has never tried, I mean, because it, it's quite possible someone's listening to this pod and it's finding out about your company for the first time, right? Maybe it's never tried any of your decks. Um, uh, pause on the try to any of your decks. But um, as far as for um, if you were talking directly to someone who you wanted to essentially sell them on why they should at least try a witch deck, right? What would you tell them as far as for like, how would you sell them on that? Dude, I honestly don't even know. No? <laughs> Just try it out. <laughs> I mean, Just like, I mean, a lot of the times, like, it's a tough it's, question, it's, right? Because it, it's it kind of asking you yeah. to glaze yourself. Pause on the glaze yourself. But I, you know what I mean, right? Like yeah. if, you know, because a lot of people will, in, in a lot of ways, you kind of have those people that will shun the new guy, right? Yeah. Or shun the new company. But, um, you know, I think there's something to be said about, you know, expanding, you know, mm-hmm. trying out new things and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I've got low kicks and I've got medium kicks. Got a lot of shapes, too. I've got, I'm trying to get a lot more shapes. Um, I'm going to be hand sanding some shapes like very soon. Okay. So I'm going to try some different things here and there, but you probably won't ever see a high mold from me. <laughs> no, you don't really do high mold. Are you more of like a medium low mold? Yeah. Cause personally, I just find them like very, like just so crazy to me. Yeah. And some of them get wild. Like they're like, yeah, those, you know what I mean? Like, they're just, those are insane. really boxing you in. But, I mean, overall, like, I think if if you want a, a real, like, a realistic feel, definitely try my low mold. Yeah. And if you want something that's the good low, for I'm telling you, the low's yeah. fire. Thank you. The low's fire. But I think, like, overall, the medium mold that I have is very good for, like, anyone that's, like, kind of well-rounded or just wants to, like, start. Yeah. It's, like, I think it's solid. I like that. Yeah. Um just kind of wrapping up here again, kind of just going on with like different aspects of the brand or like being a brand owner, Mm -hmm. um, as a brand owner, I'm sure you regularly get the DMS sponsor me, sponsor me, sponsor me. Is that the best way in your opinion to get noticed by a company more specifically, which no, I mean, I've gotten like, I get, I don't, I don't get the sponsor me. Mm -hmm. I've gotten a few times, not as much as like you would think, but I do get, these DMS from people that don't follow me yeah, and they send me their new edits. Really? <laughs> and I'm just like, what? The unso- I'm going to, I'm going to just say this. The unsolicited edit is like not a good thing. No. You know, no. like no. if the algorithm brings your edit to me, I'm going to like it if I like it, you know, yeah. but the whole like DMing the edit, never following or talking to the person and just saying like, yo, show love. Like, yeah, that's, and- I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's the way to do it. You know, I get a lot of those. Yeah. And then I also get the, uh, follow my YouTube channel or, Hey, I just followed you. Follow me back. And I'm just like, I'm like, dude, chill. But (laughs) daddy chill. I will tell you how to get my attention for sure. (laughs) Yeah. Is like, I want to kind of keep it like a 
kind of want to keep it like old school where it's like yeah if you want to if you want to send me like a like a sponsor me tape you can That's you know sick. just make make an entire part just make a part it doesn't matter if it's inside or outside but as long as you're using my boards then send that to me post okay. it send it to me it could be a youtube video it doesn't matter I love it. But if you send that over to me, I'll I'll watch it for it's, sure. Dude, the sponsor me tape on a, in a, for a fingerboard company is wild. Yeah. That's sick. Um, so talk to me real quick about your your team specifically cuz uh you know we we mentioned that like social media is a huge part in growing your platform. Yeah. Would you would you say that having a team also falls into that category as far as as far as like growing your platform? Oh, 100%. Like if I didn't have Jet Lee early on, I feel like it would have been a lot harder. To get to this point yeah shout out know? jet so shout who's on the jet. team real quick so i know jet for sure so jet for sure and then there's uh there's varho he's from illinois and then we have my homie nardo okay and then we have the homie cooley okay aka bennett he okay. just he can't figure out an instagram name so i always change it up every now and again i like that but um yeah that's that's the official team right now i like that okay and then um, as far as for, so I, I heard that there's um, like a, a funny or good story behind how uh, Jet got on the team. Yeah. So basically <laughs> it, it was like a weird, like full circle kind of thing uh -huh. because Varho was the first person to buy a board from me. Yeah. But he was already online friends with like Jet Li. Yeah. So he told Jet Li about me. And then so Jet Li followed me. And he had at this point, he still didn't know who I was. Right. And my buddy Sean works with him at Brooklyn Projects. Okay. And then Sean, I think, showed up with one of my boards. And it was a blank. Yeah. And he told him, like, oh, you know, my buddy Eric makes these. Yeah. He's like, oh, sick. And he gave him, the, he gave him my account. And then that's how he was like, wait a minute. He's local. This guy's, this guy's up my alley, you know. He's, he's around here somewhere. So... It was really weird how, like, he got connected with me through someone from in the Midwest. Like, yeah, it's so weird. That's weird. Someone out of state just yeah connecting you guys. That's sick. Yeah. But then it we meant, it was meant to be. Yeah, we we linked up for the first time. Like, I think I forgot what shop sesh it was. Mm -hmm. But yeah, are we talking like, like at slush? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I didn't know, like, I didn't know how it was gonna be because I wasn't sure. Like, I had never like hung out with him in person yeah but he was like super cool and then i remember we filmed like a bunch and um we filmed we filmed a ton and um when i got home he had sent me i guess he had made an edit like on his train ride home yeah and then he was just like for whenever you're ready and it just says like which county welcomes Jet Lee. And it's just a Damn. whole like edit. And I was like, bro, I'm gonna post this like right now. Bro, that's fire <laughs> to just send it over and be like, when you're ready. And I was like, I was like, it's happening right now. That's <laughs> fire. Okay, so if someone's trying to get on Witch, definitely gotta be writing a Witch board. Definitely gotta send you a sponsor me edit. Yeah. 100%. I love that. I love that. Um, can we expect anything in the future as far as like because I know I know that aside from boards, you also do the tape on the side, right? Mm -hmm. your was it witch tape or was it called uh angel tape angel tape yeah and then um but can we expect any like obstacles wheels merch or what are, what are we thinking so what can we look forward to for 2025 for which so i definitely have merch yeah um i have like apparel that i've been kind of like messing around with the the yeah, the mustard trucker hat is fire thank you little Dijon hat. I like I like hats a lot. So I'm always like messing around with like different sorts of like blank hats. Yeah. But I do have like I have like hoodies and like t-shirts like kind of okay. lined up that I've already like mocked up. Yeah. But I'm saving that for down the line. I love that. Yeah. I don't want to just start putting it out there yet. I don't I don't feel like it's ready. Yeah. But definitely like soft goods. Um wheels could be something in the future. Okay. Been researching a lot. Okay. Um, there's like a little mini project in the works Oh, that we've kind of been working on for a while. So. Okay. Okay. Definitely Sounds that. good. Any collabs that we can look forward to for the rest of the year or maybe in the next year? You know, honestly, probably, probably not. I've had, I've had people reach out to me and they've, they've asked me like if I'd be interested in doing something like that. Yeah. But I like to build my connections first. Yeah. Like I, I kind of don't want to like, 
do something with someone I don't really know. I like it. I can respect that. Yeah. Like, like even, even if you're not local to me or anything, as long as you just, we just build a connection and we're like homies and stuff like that first and I get to know you, like, yeah, I definitely would want to do that with you. Yeah. Down the line. And then it would also have to be like really sick. Yeah. Heck yeah. You, know? well, you want to be super sick. Yeah. Hell yeah. Where do you see which in the next three years or where do you, where do you hope, which is in the next three years? I think I would see it where I feel like if I continue to put in the effort that I have been, Mm -hmm. you know, and just trying to like create my own like little like lane, you know, I think I could probably get it to where I don't have to work a normal job anymore. Okay. (laughs) Cause I'd be sick. And it's not that like I'm trying to do this for the money, you know, but it's, it's so fun to do. Like just making boards to me has just been so like, it's probably the calmest I've ever been. Yeah. And probably the happiest I've ever been like in terms of like with anything that I've ever done. Yeah. You know, cause a lot of the times I felt like I struggled with trying to figure out like what I wanted to do with my life. But as soon as I started making boards, I was like, I love this. And I I would love to do this. Love to do it full time. Forever. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. It's sick. We've talked about skateboarding. We've talked about which we've talked about all the in between. I want to now ask you a couple questions in regards to yourself as like a fingerboarder. Is that cool? Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Who are some of your biggest supporters uh, when it comes to not just your fingerboard stuff, but right now currently in life, like if you do something rad, who's blowing up your text messages, who's hyping you up? My brother, for sure. My mom, um, my girlfriend, Jet Li, Manny. Heck yeah. Just my close immediate friends, for sure. They're definitely blowing me up, showing me hella support throughout everything. It's glazing you up. Yeah. I like that. Um, any current sponsors? Like for myself? For yourself as a fingerboarder. Like if I would want any or if I have any? Well, no. So do you have any right now? Oh, do I have any? No. I don't. No. Oh, you know, here's a good question. Not to backtrack and talk about which real quick, but yeah. would you ever make yourself pro for which? No, I no. don't think so. I'm not good enough, dude. I like that. Okay. Well, I, the self-aware <laughs> king is, I like that. Self-aware king, we appreciate that on the pod. Um, <laughs> you're just like, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough for anybody, dude. <laughs> you you kind of rip. And my mom. There you go. This is good enough for my mom, dude. She she doesn't yeah. care if I suck at fingerboarding. She she yeah. I could I could see your mom wanting you to have a pro she, board. She sponsored me my whole life, dude. Shout out moms. Yeah, shout out mom. Love shout her. out mom. Shout out big five. <laughs> um, dream sponsors, dream sponsors. Dynamic for sure, dude. Scott B sliding the DMs. Dynamic. That'd be 100%. crazy. Um, as far as wheels go, yeah. I really like. I don't actually, you know what? I don't know because I, I like abstract wheels a lot. Okay. But at the same time, like I also don't know what wheels I like the most because I try so many. Okay. So I don't know about wheels. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. How do you keep fingerboarding fresh and not get burned out? I kind of just try, I try to get as creative as possible. So instead of just seshing a ledge, back and forth mm-hmm. i'll try to add a bank or mm. i'll ollie on or kickflip on and do something off over something like yeah i'll just try to like switch things up so i'm not doing the same thing like over and over yeah and i think that's where the skating background kind of comes in and helps people out because you can kind yeah. of look at something and and kind of feel like okay i can add a bank here and mm-hmm. it doesn't need to just be a ledge yeah you know? i like that it's kind of like it's kind of like skate three where you just drop obstacles down. Yeah. Like you can literally just put anything anywhere and then just figure something out. Figure it out. Yeah. I like that. Um, let's see. What's your go-to flat ground trick in a game of skate? Probably tray flip. I like that. Nice, simple tray flip. Yeah. I like it. Um, I understand you have somewhat of a musical past. Yeah. Can we touch on your, your rapper days, your SoundCloud rapper <laughs> days? Yeah, we sure can. Um, give me, give me the overview. Are we still doing the SoundCloud rapper thing? No, nah, dude, I'm happy now. So no I'm more not, sad boy music. I'm not making sad boy music. Well, anymore. What was the name though? What you had to have a stage name. So it was Loner Party XO. It's actually fire. Yeah. It was like, a. so I, we were trying to combine, uh, 
like 808s and stuff and yeah. like trap music, mm-hmm. like emo, like rap music with hardcore music. Yeah. So it'd be like a beat and then it'll end up having a breakdown. Yeah. So we'll do stuff like that. Um, a lot of the stuff I did by myself. So people would send me like people from like everywhere would just send me beats. Yeah. And then I'll sit there and just like record and track my vocals over them and mix them and stuff like that. You still have music posted? Yeah. We're going to have to. It's all over SoundCloud. SoundCloud is the the place to check it out. I got to check that out. It's not the greatest, but it's there. It's there. I I love how you said I'm happy now. Yeah. (laughs) I love that. The self-aware king. I love that. All right. Um, Let's see. The, uh, I also understand you used to do a clothing line, right? Yeah. What's what's the, what's the overview? It was basically for that. Oh, for, okay. Yeah. So I, w- I was making merch for that, and then so essentially it was it was merch for yeah. SoundCloud days. Okay, yeah, pretty much. I like like I, w- I was making hoodies and t-shirts and hats and stuff. Okay. Yeah. If you had to pop on some music right now, if we, if we handed you the metaphorical ox chord, who are you putting on? What, what song? What artist? I think I would put on Arcade Fire, nice. and then I would put a uh, Crown of Love. It's my favorite song, like one of my favorite songs in the Classic. world. Classic. Yeah. Damn. All right. Wasn't expecting that. Uh, what's your uh, favorite Taylor Swift song? I have zero. Wow. Yeah. Not a Swifty? Uh-uh. Wow. We get to send the pod right now. That's I'll, all right. I'll get out of here. I know. I, I'll, I'll see myself <laughs> I'm out. I'm sorry. All right. Shout out Taylor Swift. Um, who would win in a game of skate, Mike Schneider or God? That's a tough one. It's also a trick question. It's Mike Schneider is he is god, god. that's I like that i actually didn't see that one coming you didn't, you didn't see it coming <laughs> shout out to you didn't see it coming um all right eric we have reached the point in your big spin podcast where we're going to take some questions from the internet okay and then we're going to go ahead and do some no nuance questions where we kind of go back and forth i'll give you two words and you just kind of pick which one but you give no context to the answer okay all right for the questions from the internet um we're going to go through them kind of quick. We're not looking for long answers. Just kind of short and sweet. Okay. Cool? Yeah. First question here. Does it clap? <laughs> yes. Sure it does. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that, was, that was a good one. All right. Uh, someone said, why not? Or let's see. Where, where was that one? What tool? This is a good one. What tool do you wish you had in your shop and why when it comes to making decks? Um. A belt sander. I don't have a belt sander. We need that Harbor Freight sponsor. Yeah, exactly. Dude, shout out Harbor Freight. So in the DMs. Are we gonna get one are we gonna get more one dollar fingerboards? So no. Um <laughs> I can't say no actually. I love that. No. So no. But maybe if I get an official collaboration, which I'm working on. Okay. I like that. Uh, this one here, maybe you'll understand what this is. It says, dark musician rip or what? Need love for the spellcasters. There's just something about rips I feel like I can't do, but I love dark. I love, I like dark magician girl more though. So maybe that one first. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. When are you going to bring back the Lil Peep graphic? Whenever I get an official collab. Dude, the official Peep collab would be crazy. Ask, ask uh, Mama Peep. Got to send her ask a DM. Her for it. Yeah. Got a link with the witch. Exactly. Oh, I like that. Link with the witch. Uh, when's the next drop? The next drop, I'm aiming for like the end of November, but it might take a little longer, so possibly early December. I like that. When are we going to get the Jet Li Pro model? It's coming. Pause and it's coming. It's coming. Um, so we're going to give you the two words. Okay. Okay. And then uh, no nuance, so they're gonna go. Fa- they're gonna go fast. You ready for this? Riding a broomstick or taking an Uber? Broomstick. I wish I could fly. There you go. Witch or warlocks? Witch. Skateboarding or fingerboarding? Fingerboarding. Tacos or burritos? Burritos. Spell casting or potion making? Spell casting. Nolly or switch? Nolly. Black River or dynamic? Dynamic. Smash Mary Kill Mike Schneider Jake PFB or Slush God Go. I'll fuck them all. Um, Whoa. <laughs> okay. Smash all of them. Smash and all then of kill them. kill them all. And then marry them all afterward. I, I, I was going to order. Yeah. Okay. That's a good order. As, yeah. long, as, as long as the smashing came <laughs> before the murder, I'm good. 
I like that. <laughs> Eric, which county, where can people find you online? Which county spellcasters on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. I love it. Yeah. Dude, you've reached the end of your Big Spin podcast. Thank oh, you yeah. so much for coming out all this way. Appreciate you. And uh, for hanging out with Jake and I. And seriously, it was it was cool to sit down and have this conversation. Oh, yeah. I'm stoked to see what the future holds for which. Yeah, I'm stoked too. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you. Big Spin Podcast. Like, comment, subscribe. Thanks so much.